cases rising again, new variants are spreading, and sadly, some of the reckless behavior we've seen on television over the past few weeks means that more new cases are to come in the weeks ahead. I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. We have so much to look forward to, so much promise and potential of where we are, and so much reason for hope. But right now, I'm scared. Well, because cases are going up, but hospitalizations and deaths are going down. President Biden and the CDC director offering a grim outlook on the state of the pandemic. Where does this come from? Our next guest argues his constituents now know what to do and stay safe as his state prepares to lift remaining COVID sanctions. Uh, restrictions, I should say. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, ready to do it. Uh, Governor, you were one of the quickest to open up first after the immediate shutdown almost a year ago today. Why is now the right time to be the 19th state to go without a mass mandate. Well, morning, Brian. Thanks for having me on. We're really excited about where we are right now in our fight against COVID. But as you just said, our economy has been reopened for the mo most part, working to protect livelihoods too for almost a year now. The sectors that we have left that have been struggling are like many around the country when you think about the airline industry, business and tourism, travel, convention center business. In Georgia, you know, this time of year, all the way through the summer, our beaches, mountains, you know, there's a lot of hard work in Georgians that depend on those jobs and businesses that depend on that revenue. And that's what we've got to reopen. Our numbers uh, in my conversations with Dr. Toomey uh, are in the right place to start doing that. Uh, so we're working that way. Yeah, I mean, if business wants you to wear a mask, if you go shopping, go ahead, wear a mask. But you're not gonna mandate it from the state level. And that's the point. Uh, people could also use their own judgment, do what they're comfortable with, or you don't have to go to the movies, you don't have to uh, go to Costco, uh, especially with everything they can deliver today. Governor, you're in the new, uh, go ahead, final thought on that? Well, I was just gonna say, you know, we haven't had a statewide mass mandate ever, the whole pandemic. We don't have one now, but people are doing the right thing everywhere I go. When people are shopping, they're being respectful, wearing sure. a mask, social distancing, and getting people vaccinated. That's how we come out of this and live with it for however long it's going to be over the next several months, or even if it's years, that's what we're going to have to do. But we can't continue to be shut down. People cannot survive that. Uh, Governor, almost from the day you had on election day, from Stacey Abrams still not admitting that she lost uh, the governor's race, uh, you've been in the eye of the storm, so to speak, and now uh, first allied, and now you're kind of warring with the former president of the United States. And then you went out and looked at the, where Georgia was voting, now that the pandemic hopefully is in a rearview mirror, and you made some changes, and you signed this into law. And here's some of the changes. Require a, voter, uh, a photo for an absentee ballot. Uh, limit time uh, to request absentee ballots. Uh, ballot drop boxes locations. You can have one per county unless the county's really big. Replace the Secretary of State as election board chair with an appointee. Allow election boards to replace election officials in underperforming counties. Reduce the runoff election uh, time. And uh, bars outside groups from handing out food or water in line. First off, on that last one, you can get refreshments. You just don't want uh, political organizations to hand them out. It's up to the precincts to do it if they want to do it, correct? Yeah, the, the, that's outrageous what people are saying. And you can, the political groups and others, nonprofits, whoever can still do that, Brian, if they're outside the 150 foot buff, buffer around the polling location or 25 feet from the end of the line. So it's not like you still can't do those things. We're just trying to keep voters from being harassed and electioneered while they're standing in line preparing to vote. Uh, we've had laws like that, and most states have around the country for years. But as you know, hypocrisy is running rampant right now. This bill makes it easy to vote and hard to cheat. I heard you mention on the tease earlier that President Biden got four Pinocchios from the Washington Post, which is incredible, because they're absolutely right. What he was saying is not true. And even more hypocrisy was Stacey Abrams celebrating New Jersey expanding to nine days of early voting when her own state of Georgia has 17 and we just added more opportunities on the weekend. So right. they're being mistruthful about what the bill does. Right, but they're out communicating you because you have the facts on your side, it seems, and even the Washington Post picked that out. First off, the accusation from among people, the President of the United States, on the whole water thing as well as other things. Listen. What I'm worried about is how un-American this whole initiative is. 
It's sick. Deciding that you're going to end voting at 5 o'clock when working people are just getting off work. Well, the Washington Post heard that, like you heard that, and this is what they figured out. Biden falsely claims the new Georgia law ends voting hours early. It is not true, right? Your hours remain the same, correct? Yeah, and a matter of fact, we've got 134 out of 159 counties, and this bill will actually be expanding the number of hours that people can vote in the process. So what he's saying is not true, but, you know, it leads to the question of this is all just a distraction for them to make a case to do an unconstitutional power grab with H.R. 1, and also to distract from the you know, talking about water flowing, there's a crisis of people flowing across the southern border. Uh, you know, perhaps they should pay more attention to that than our um, genuous voting times that we have in Georgia, especially compared to his own state of Delaware. And what you're trying to do is if, if you don't have ID, you write a state number in or your social security number on that absentee ballot. And when it comes to drop boxes, this is the first time you're using them. You just don't want a lot of them. You want to put them in places, in, in controlled places. One per county, unless this county is really big. Real quick on your on drop boxes. Yeah, the, the other side's saying we're taking that away. There's actually counties that didn't have drop boxes. This legislation requires every county to have one. So what they're saying again is not true. So Governor, if they're calling you racist and they're and they're saying you're trying to not lock out, um, you're trying to stop people from voting, and they're saying minorities shouldn't vote, you have to have your communication out team if you feel you have the facts, and it seems you do on your side every day because it's it's relentless and again they're putting georgia in the boycott eye of the storm major league baseball's pressuring to get their all-star game out the pga is getting pressured to move out the masters uh major corporation so it's up to you to save them by communicating uh what hey, you're did, doing did 11 interviews yesterday getting an early okay. start today we're pushing it hard to get the truth out there and the truth wins in the end as you know absolutely governor thanks so much